Hey, what's up, peoples? Hardleg Joe here with the profile for Big Spooky Dot Deck. My take on Skull Servants updated for the 2021 meta. Going over our deck list for monsters, we've got three of the original Spooky Scary Skeleton, two Turtles, two Kaiju Batman, three Zombie Mr. Ed, three Spooky Chan, three Zombu, three Mommy Spookums, one Daddy Spookums. I don't care about spookiness, damn it, I just want to grill. Three Spooky Coon, and three of the spookiest, scariest skeleton this side of the river sticks. For spells, we've got three alluring options, one for one for one, real lightning, a one-way ticket to the graveyard, three giant monster explosions, three of that forbidden drip that all the kids are talking about, and two reset buttons. Our extra deck contains one each of ambiguous number of heads dragon, chaos, the chaotic dragon of chaos, Nuka-Cola quantum, big tank, uh, the smasher, the stopper, the spinner, two poppers, the Bouncer, The Swapper, The Knight, Link Karibo, A Bunny Corn, and this thing. Whatever this is supposed to be. It, it looks inappropriate. Please cover that art up. Censor that for me, Winkerer. Thank you. As for the side deck, I'll briefly go over that later, but it's mostly filled with other options for the extra deck because I couldn't really think of much to add into the main deck. And that's because Skull Servants is one of the most straightforward and easy to build archetypes in the entire game. In fact, if you're new to Yu-Gi-Oh! or you're trying to get someone into the game, this is probably one of the most newbie-friendly decks that you can build. If you're unfamiliar with the playstyle, this is a classic go-second beatdown style deck, where the object is just to make a really big monster and attack for a lot of damage. You accomplish this with King of the Skull Servants, its original attack is equal to the number of Skull Servants in your graveyard times a thousand. So, if you get all three of your Skull Servants into the graveyard, you will have a 3,000 attacker. Which is not great in the modern game, but fortunately for us, White Princess, Lady in White, White Mare, White Baking, and White Prince all share the same effect. That their name counts as Skull Servant while they're in the graveyard. So if you can dump half your deck into the grave, then King can get very, very big, easily over 9,000. Yes, that was a meme. Fight me. Anyway, dumping all these into the graveyard is made quite easy with their effects. Specifically, White Prince. If this hits the graveyard from anywhere, you can send one Skull Servant and one Lady in White from your deck to the graveyard. This is not once per turn which is why we play Skull Servant and Lady at White at 3, even though the former is a weak normal monster and the latter has situational use at best. Because we can often activate Prince three times in one turn and get all six of those out of the deck. This is also why we're playing more than 40 cards. You have to play Servant and Lady at 3, but you don't really want to draw any of them. Having more cards in your deck means your chance of getting both of them or getting multiples of them is lower. Of course, this also means your chance of getting White Prince is lower, but fortunately, we have a ton of ways to gain access to him. If Princess is summoned, for example, you can send a White Prince from your deck to the graveyard. Unizombie can send any zombie from the deck to the graveyard, which all the Skull Monsters are. And Foolish Burial can send any monster to the graveyard, which all the Skull Monsters are. Uh, normally, if you have these last two, though, you'll probably want to use them on White Baking instead, because it also triggers Prince while getting you a bonus card in the process. If this hits the graveyard, you can search any two monsters from your deck that mention Skull Servant, and then discard a card from your hand. Normally what you do is add a White Prince and your one of White Mare, and then discard the Prince to trigger its effect. White Mare, meanwhile, you can discard to special summon a Lady or a King that has been banished. The reason you'd want to search this has to do with Prince's second effect. In addition to filling up the graveyard with skeletons, Prince can banish itself from the graveyard, along with two other Skull Servants, to summon King Spooky from the deck. So what you do is, send Baking to the grave somehow, search Prince and White Mare, discard Prince to let you send a Servant and a Lady to the graveyard, banish all three to summon King, 
and then discard White Mare to summon your banished Lady. Now, Lady can sometimes be useful for her effect. She basically makes it so your king is unaffected by spell traps, which can be really good against back row heavy decks. Most of the time, though, you're going to be using her as material for an extra deck summon, because you'll notice that that combo didn't require you to use your normal summon. We play a ton of generic Link 2s, so whether you have Mizuki or Princess or another Prince or even a regular Skull Servant, you can normal summon it and then link it away with Lady to boost your king's attack while also helping to clear your opponent's field. Uh, Akashic Magician has been surprisingly useful in this deck, so has Avendred Savior, this can get you more zombies in the graveyard. But the real stars are actually the Nightmares, who can discard even more of your skeletons to the grave in order to destroy your opponent's resources and make way for Big Skull to attack for game. Uh, as for the Synchros, these can be made with Unizombie. This is a level 3 tuner that has two effects. One to send a zombie from deck to graveyard, and one to discard a card from your hand. Both effects also require you to raise a monster's level by 1, which we normally use on itself to make it level 4 or 5. Together with Lady in White, this is how you can make level 7 and 8 synchros. I play two of each flavor, some defensive options in case we're forced to go first, and some offensive options so we can extend when we're going second. None of these are necessary to the deck, and in fact, most of the side deck is other options that you might want to consider, so just customize the extra deck however you'd like. Uh, speaking of things that aren't necessary, though, that could easily describe the rest of the deck. Like, you have to play 3 Servant, 3 Lady, 3 Prince, 3 Baking, 3 Unizombie, at least 1 Nightmare, and at least 2 King of the Skull Servants, but the rest is kinda up to you and whatever you can afford. Like, if you're playing this online, or if this gets a reprint at some point, I'd highly recommend playing Forbidden Droplet. Granted, this is good in just about every deck, especially Go Second decks, but it's particularly good in Skull Servants, because discarding your entire hands to negate your opponent's board and have their monsters attack is pretty much the best opening this deck can hope for. Uh, the Kaiju engine can be good for dealing with really strong bosses like Dragoon. We play this one because it's the weakest Kaiju, and this one because it's dark for Allure of Darkness. This is pretty great draw power in this deck, since almost everything is dark. And if you banish a Lady or a King, then you can just discard your White Mare to summon it back onto the field. Or put it back in the graveyard with Burial from a different dimension. This is probably the most sus card on the list, since it relies on having some fairly specific setup. But I've never found two copies to be bricky in this large version of the deck, and I've won almost every game I've managed to use it. If you don't realize the utility, this is a quick play that can return up to three banished monsters back into the grave. So during the battle phase, you can attack with King, and then suddenly put the Prince, Lady, and Servant back into the grave, boosting King by 3,000 and earning a surprise win. Uh, you could do a similar thing with Princess, which is why I play her at 3, despite there being a better normal summon in the deck. She has a second hand trap effect, where you can discard her at any point to lower the attack of all monsters by 300 for every level slash rank they have. Your king is level 1, so this will barely affect him, and your links don't even have levels, so they don't give a damn, but the kaijus you summon to your opponent's side of the field are both level 8, meaning they will lose 2400 attack, putting them in easy OTK range if you have a king with over 9000 attack. Yes, I said it again. But yeah, as for her other techs, Lightning Storm is great for back row removal, while also not being completely useless against monster heavy decks, Though you could just as easily replace this with Twin Twisters if you want a budget option, since it can clear a decent amount of traps while also discarding skulls from your hand. Uh, Book of Life is also another decent budget option to replace any of the tech cards I mentioned. It's essentially Monster Reborn for zombies that also banishes a monster from your opponent's graveyard. And being able to reborn a zombie is pretty great for extending your plays, since you can bring back a prince and then link it off again to get another two cards out of the deck. That's why I play Mizuki at three, because it's essentially monster reborn while it's in the graveyard, and we have a number of different ways to discard it. If you wanted to cut anything from this, try to make it a 40 card deck, or maybe just put in some new tech cards, things that come out after this episode. 
Mizuki, this, and probably the White Princess are the first things to go. And any of these spell traps are pretty much interchangeable, except for except for the one ofs. Um, not the best Skull Servant deck. You could easily play this with dangers, and it might be just as good. Although it's very luck reliant. But hopefully this should give you a good base to start on if you're just trying to get into Skull Servants of your own, or if you just want a fun, consistent build that doesn't rely on a bunch of random discards. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of the deck profile. Like the video if you liked it, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe if you want more goofy deck profiles in general. I do one of these every other week. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, good luck, and have fun.